We've been working with electric field uh, lines and diagrams for a little bit now. Um, and we're going to move on now to something called equipotential lines. Now this might look very familiar to you if you've done anything with um, graphs like this, these contour maps. Um, now contour maps attempt to show the, the three-dimensional um, orientation of, uh, of areas on, uh, on a flat piece of paper by showing each one of these lines being an area of consistent height or consistent altitude. So you can see some of these are marked, got uh, 11,600 um, feet or, uh, probably and 1,100 feet on this line. And so as we move in this direction on this map, we are increasing in altitude. This diagram over here is a map as well, but not of, uh, of geography. This is a map of electric fields and equipotentials. So these little dots here represent charges. Looks like we've got um, maybe negative charge here, positive for these two, negative for this one, positive for this one. This one looks like another positive. Kind of tough to tell which ones are positive, but I can see that these ones are connected and these ones are connected. These two don't ever connect, so these two must be the same charge, and this one must be a different charge. Um, but regardless of uh, which one's positive and which one's negative, we have these lines that go between um, these charges. Those are the electric field lines. And then the other ones that kind of encircle all of these, those are equipotential lines. Those are lines where anywhere along that line uh, has an equal electric potential value. So we need to get a little practice with, uh, with sketching these and also with interpreting these. Um, one type of problem that you can expect to see on the AP test is to be given a graph just of the equipotential lines and asked to um, either calculate or to sketch uh, the electric field lines that, uh, that would go along with that. So let's look at just some, some simple cases for to give us an idea of, uh, of what these things look. So first we'll draw the electric field on each of these, um, and then we'll put in the equipotential lines. So let's start with the simplest case, just a single positive charge. So the electric field on this, we just have lines that go straight out in all directions from, the, uh, uh, from that positive charge. And, oops. Out. There we go. And then we draw those lines with arrows going this direction. To show that if we put a positive test charge anywhere along here, it's going to move outward away from that positive charge at the middle. Um, the equation for, uh, for electric potential um, was related to the distance, or uh, 1 over the distance. Um, so electric potential was related to, not approximately equal to, but uh, proportional to, proportional to 1 over the distance. So uh, for just a single point charge here, a positive charge, um, if we pick some spot that's um, you know, a, a certain distance away, say a meter away from this positive charge, then every other spot that's exactly a meter away from that positive charge will have the same electric potential. So this is the very center, and then we need to pick a series of spots that are all the same distance away from that. Well, we're describing a circle. So we would have lines going around in a circle, Usually we do dotted lines or dashed lines like this to, uh, uh, to represent the equipotential lines. Uh, your textbook sticks with dashed green lines like I've done here, so that's kind of a nice convention. Um, they don't have to be uh, like that, so this one just shows solid black lines, but uh, it's nice to have some way to differentiate these. Um, now we, uh, we can draw multiple equipotential lines here. And typically, each one of these lines will put some value for the potential at any spot on that line. Uh, here, I'm just making up values, so let's do one volt um, anywhere along that line. 
has a potential, an electric potential value of one volt. We tend to draw these so that they're spaced evenly, not in terms of position, but in terms of electric potential. So if I do one volt and then two volts, the next one I need to do is three volts and then four volts, not one, two, 10, 20. Uh, so we need to think about how these would be, uh, would be spaced out then. And it turns out that um, if I want to space these uh, so that the, uh, the voltage changes by the same amount each time, then the distance is not going to be consistent. As we get farther away, from our point charge, our uh, spacing between equal potential lines is going to get larger as well. I'm going to run another room to draw this, but something like that. So we can see that these two are pretty close, but these two are farther away from each other. So this is my 2 volt line, and this is my 3 volt line. Um, now it's worth noting a, a couple of things about the electric field lines and comparing those to the equipotential lines. First off, the electric field lines and the equipotential lines, they form right angles. Every time. So the electric field is always perpendicular to equipotential lines. Uh, the second thing that we should notice here is that... Uh, uh, that I have these labeled incorrectly. Let's fix this. This should be our 3 volts, and this should be our 1 volt. Um, the electric field lines, they go in the direction of decreasing voltage. Uh, so I, I just had this, uh, uh, this labeled wrong, 1 over R, as we get farther away, our, our volt, uh, potential difference, sorry, our electric potential should decrease, not increase there, so sorry for the confusion. Um, so the electric field lines, they go from the 3 volts to the 2 volts to the 1 volt, and they would continue in that, uh, in that order. Uh, and then the last thing that, that uh, we ought to notice here is that, uh, like we talked about, the spacing between equal potentials, that gives us an idea of the strength of the electric field as well. Um, so it's the, the strength of the electric field, we say, is inversely proportional to the distance between these, um, uh, between these equipotential lines. Um, and in fact, we can write an equation relating those two, that the electric field strength is equal to the potential difference divided by the distance for that potential difference. So if I knew the distance between these two uh, between the 3 volt and the 2 volt here, um, then I could do my potential difference should be 1 volt, and my distance I would know, and I could calculate then what the electric field is um, on average between these two points. So we might just say that's the electric field at this point halfway between those. We know the direction, and then we would know the magnitude as well. Let's do another one of these with uh, a positive and a negative charge next to each other. This is called an electric dipole. So if we draw the, uh, the electric field lines for this, they start at positive charges and end at negative charges. And we have kind of this curving pattern. We did something like this before. So I don't need to get into too much detail on these, but something like that. We're going to have some that uh, uh, go off in this direction. Uh, there we go, and then some that are coming in from infinity as well. Okay, so now when we look at uh, the equipotentials, the easiest one to do is the potential, um, the electric potential of zero. If we had a spot that's, uh, or sorry, that, uh, that's a, a maximum here. So if we have a spot that's halfway between these, no, oh, I'm hung again. Uh, if, if we have a spot that's, uh, that's halfway between these, um, the distance between each one of those uh, uh, those spots would be equal. So when we do our 
electric potential equation. That was the 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And we add, oops, we add up all of our um, charges divided by our distances here. Um, what we'll find then is that if I pick a spot halfway between these two charges, um, they have, uh, I didn't mention it, but we'll say they have the same charge, just opposite of each other. One's positive and one's negative. And we'll have the same distance between those. So the electric potential at, uh, at this spot then is going to be at a minimum. It's going to be at zero here. Uh, and that's going to be true as long as we're exactly the same distance between these two points. Uh, and so as long as we have the same distance, that's just going to represent, that be represented by this vertical line like this. Um, and then we can kind of go, go into some more um, calculations with these. We end up with a, a general shape on this that looks something like this, and we can just see that, okay, we need to have this line perpendicular to the electric field lines at every point there. Something like this, and then similar on the other side. Just make sure that that equipotential line is uh, perpendicular to the electric field lines. Okay, and this part maybe isn't drawn uh, super well, but. Uh, Something like that. Oops. Oh, um, so I, I mixed up two, two of these things, but you get the idea. Uh, so the, uh, the equipotential lines then, again, they're perpendicular to the electric field. They are closer together when the electric field is stronger, so like here the electric field is stronger, and here the electric field is stronger. Here it's uh, uh, it's very strong as well. As we get further out here, um, that electric field gets weaker and weaker. And then the last one of uh, particular importance and interest would be for a parallel plate consider. And we looked at the electric field on this. Inside we have basically a uniform, oops, we have a uniform electric field. And so our equipotential lines on this are going to be really easy to draw. Just something like this. Equally spaced because that electric field is, uh, is a constant value the whole way through there. So, on, uh, on an AP test, this is a question you might be asked to complete. Determine the electric fields at you know, three points that are given to us here. Um, given some scales, we can figure out distances and values for these equipotential lines. So first we need to know direction, and second we need to know the magnitude for these equi uh, sorry, for the electric field at each point. So if we look at, uh, at point A, we know that the electric field has to point perpendicular to the equipotential line, and it goes in the direction of uh, descending electric potential. So it's going to point this direction, and this one will point this direction, and this one will point this direction. So those are values at DC, B, and EA. And we also know that since these equal potential lines are closer together, this electric field is going to be larger than this one, where the equal potential lines are further apart. And so maybe I'll extend these arrows. Oops. Extend these arrows a little bit, just to get kind of a relative uh, uh, relative length here, with this being the largest, and then a little bit smaller, and then a little bit smaller than that. Okay, and then the value for the electric field. 
is equal to the potential difference divided by the distance. So if we look at A, the potential difference, well, we want to figure out what it is at this one point. So we need to, to look at uh, points on either side of that. So we'll consider the, the 20 volts and the 10 volt equal potential line here. So the potential difference between those two, I'll switch colors again here. It's from here to here. Um, the potential difference there is going to be 10 volts divided by, let's see, we have one, two, three squares over and one square down. Eh, probably not quite four, eh, a, little, a little more than one square down, maybe four squares. So on that scale, that's a four centimeter distance. And you'd probably have uh, better measurements to work with on an AP test question. Uh, but 10 volts divided by four centimeters, so that'd be 2.5 volts per centimeter. Um, but we want to use standard units here, so we'll make that in volts per meter, so that'd be 250 volts per meter. Or volts per meter is the same as 250 uh, newtons per coulomb. Okay, and then the electric field at B, that would again be a change of 10 volts that we're looking at. But that distance looks more like one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven centimeters. Okay, so that's 10 volts over point, uh, 0.7 meters. Okay, so that one's going to be like uh, 1.3, uh, sorry, 130 newts per coulomb, something like that. Uh, 0.07 meters, there we go, uh, 130 newtons per coulomb, somewhere in that neighborhood anyway. And then for EC, now we're looking at this distance, still uh, 10 volts difference between those two points. And that distance, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 over. One, two, three, four up, so maybe nine altogether, something like that. Nine centimeters. So this is 10 volts over 0 0.09 meters. So that's going to be like 110 newtons per coulomb. And I'm just making rough estimates on the, the math here. Um, but we can see anyway that the farther away these equal potential lines get, uh, yeah, the more this distance is going to increase, and so the smaller the value of the electric field will become.